This is the Logan F100-5 saw fence kit. The kit includes fences and hardware to adapt your own personal miter saw into a picture frame mold and cutoff saw. This saw is not included. This is an overview of the Logan saw fence kit. It starts with a shorter fence on the right where the raw molding is fed in and then you come down to this graduated scale that goes up to 60 inches and set your stops according to how long you want the piece to be. Subsequent pieces will come up against the same stop and of course be the same length when you make the final cut. And now we're going to assemble the Logan saw fence kit. Here are the components that come with your Logan saw fence kit. There is the right hand fence and of course the left hand fence. This is the one that will get the scales in just a few moments. Let's go over the other pieces. The scales which we'll talk about. There are two stops for two particular reasons. You will use this one time to calibrate the scales exactly where they should be and then you can dispose of this piece. And there are various screws and an allen wrench to attach things to either your table or to a board. Now let me make a point about that. You can attach all this to a work table if you have one or you could get a board as I did. This board is 80 inches long. It's three quarters, inches, uh, three quarters of an inch thick and it's at least 15 inches across this way. This can vary according to the size of the foot of the table saw or the miter saw that you're using. The one we're using requires at least 15 inches. Now grab your miter saw and set it up on this board. Doesn't matter where you set it to start with, we'll figure that out in a moment. Take a tape measure and measure from the right hand side 28 inches. Put a mark. Got it? Now this will be roughly the center of the saw. Set the saw as close to that as you can visually. If you're off an inch it won't matter. That's what you want to do. Now I'm going to Start with the fences and make sure they are the right height. By the right height, I mean I want this plane to equal this plane. As you can see right now it doesn't. But I've loosened the Allen bolts underneath so I can move with my hands and get it to just about the right height. And then I'm going to raise this one a little bit. So it will be about equal to that. Now you may need to play with this a little bit until you get it exactly right, but that's okay. That's Once you get it right, it won't change. It will be set. I'm just finger tightening these bolts right now. Take a level. Right now I'm checking the height of this. That's all. And it's pretty good. So I take my Allen wrench, reach underneath and tighten. I don't tighten it too tight right now because I may have to move it again. All right. See, I've got this pretty level. Now I'm going to go down here. Ah, I lucked out. It's pretty level all the way up and down. All right, I'm going to once again snug up these bolts a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere. Now I want the back of this fence to meet the back of this fence. So I turn the level sideways and go like that. See, you got to make sure that this is straight. If it's not straight when you move molding in here, it'll hit the corner and stuff like that. You don't want that. All right, I've got it where I want it. Now I'm going to mark where the screw holes go. Pencil. Pencil. 
On each side there are four of these to do. Once they are marked, set the fence aside and get a drill with a 9 sixty-fourths bit in it. I'm going to start a pilot hole in each of these four places. Now we're going to put the right fence on, just as we did on the left. Loosen these Allen wrench, uh, bolts just a little bit so that you can move it with your fingers. I'm going to move this thing out of the way. Ah, very good. The height is good. And so I'm going to tighten these a little bit. Once again, not too tight because you may want to go back and adjust it a little bit. It's a good idea at this point to make sure that your saw is roughly same distance on the legs here from the front of the board so everything's going to be straight. Okay. Now I'm going to mark the holes as we did on the other side. And then drill the pilot holes just as we did a few moments ago. Fences are set. It's a good idea to make sure that everything is aligned pretty good. You know, take your tape measure. Now this is just a little under three inches from the front. Just, you know, it's pretty good. You can make minor adjustments if you need to. Okay, now I'm going to tie down the saw before I put these final screws into the fences. The reason I'm doing that is I want a big stable centerpiece to work off of. Now we're going to mount the miter saw to the board. First, make sure it's roughly even on all corners. You don't want it crooked. Then we're going to just take a pencil. Miter saws have four holes of various sizes depending on the miter saw. So what you need to do is go to the hardware store and get some lag bolts that will fit into the miter saw without going through the board, which would probably mean a lag bolt of about an inch and a half long or maybe an inch and three quarters. So that's the decision you have to make that does not come with the kit. Now I'm going to move the miter saw and put my pilot holes just where I've drawn the little circles. I'm using a 9 64th size bit. If you get bigger lag bolts, you may want to use a larger bit. So you have to make those adjustments or those decisions. Now I'm going to put the saw back up here. 
line it over where I've just drilled those holes. Now you can, uh, depending on what kind of lag bolts you have, you can use a screwdriver or a socket set. I use this socket set because it's fast and easy. I like fast and easy. All right, the first one is in. Second one. Third one. Now the saw is firm on the mounting board. We're going back to the measuring arms now. Now our saw fence is set roughly to where we want it. We're going to start securing it down with these Phillips head screws. I'm doing the back right now. Now keep in mind it's important at this point that this be lined up. I can adjust the height later if I want to. All right, I've got this one. Now I'm going to make the final adjustments on the right hand fence. You can see this one needs to come up a little bit. This one needs to go down a little bit. Ah, just about perfect. And when I get this exactly the way I want it, I'm going to put the final tighten onto these Allen bolts. Okay, the right fence is done. Now I'm going through the same process on the left fence. After everything is bolted down, go back through and double check your alignment as we did a few moments ago. And if you're certain that everything is correct and it looks pretty good here, tighten your bolts and your screws so you don't ever have to fool with them again. Now that we've checked the alignment on both the right and the left hand fences, we're going to apply the scale on the left hand side. It's uh, designed so that you can put it on very accurately the first time and you won't ever have to fool with it again. For this procedure make sure that the saw is unplugged because we're going to be bringing the blade down. Make sure it's exactly on 45 degrees and lock it in there and then take the scale setting gauge, bring the blade down so that the gauge just presses against it like that and hold the gauge in place while you remove the blade. All right, holding that in place, I'm going to take what we call the marking label, take the backing off of it, slide that out a little bit and put this roughly right there at this point. Now take a pencil 
and mark it. We're ready now to apply the measuring scale. Now what I'm going to use this mark for is to place the scale. See, let's find the six inch, number six. This number six line should go right down to where that mark is. Once you have that set, I'm ready to place the scale. Holding it in place, I lift up this end of the scale and you will notice a perforation on the back that allows me to rip this off without letting it move. Make sure the six, the six inches is right there. Now I'm going to press right here. Now the reason you only take off part of the label or the backing at this point is this will hold it in place so you can apply the rest of it. We're through with this mark now so we just throw in the waste can. Now I'm going to remove the backing off the rest of the scale, kind of keeping it up off the table until all the backing is gone. Keeping it up because once that contact is made, it's stuck. Now I'm working from this side, slowly, carefully, apply the scale. Don't let it ride up this way or that way. Make sure it stays straight. Then smooth it out. For the second half of the scale, I want to find the line marked 32. Look at the line marked 32 on the first half, and I'm going to put this right on top of that. Be very careful that when you lay this down here, it's straight against the fence. And I only have pulled a little bit of this off and I'm going to have to hold it up in the air like this just a little bit because once that touches it sticks and we don't want it to stick until we're ready for it to stick. All right, that's perfect. It's right where we want it. Now I'm going to pull the rest of the backing off. Put it against. There will be a little bit of the scale left over, so you can take a razor blade and just kind of trim it off like that. We're done. The scale, of course, extends over the turntable. That was our first application of it, so we need to free it so the turntable can turn. I take a, either a razor blade or a utility knife and just come around like this and it's free. Now the turntable can turn and the scale is exactly where it's supposed to be. The saw fence comes with two stops. To install them you simply put it over the top and use that wing nut to tighten it up. The other stop is for cutting very short pieces. Let's say I was cutting a five inch piece. Here is the five inch mark right here and if I put the inside of the rabbit on that five plus a little bit, I need this stop to come in here. The reason it has this extension is so it can reach over here and not interrupt that. So that would be your stop there for the short pieces. We're now going to cut the pieces for an 8 by 10 frame. We slide it in from the right hand side with the rabbit facing you and the back of the molding over the slot so that you don't come up short, you know. It's a good idea to wire eye and ear protection it's a good idea to clamp it if your saw is equipped with a clamp. I'm using this one. If you don't have such a clamp, you may want to invest in some inexpensive 
plastic clamps, this can go like that. Generally speaking though, any kind of clamping mechanism will help you, though it's not totally necessary. Now I'm going to make the first cut. We're going to cut lengths for an 8 by 10 frame. We're going to cut the long pieces first, the two 10 inches. That way, if there's some kind of error that's made, you can always use those pieces to make the 8 inches later. So let's concentrate now on bringing this piece down to the 10 inch mark. Now, you see the rabbit, the inside of the rabbit, is right on that 10 inch line. You want to put it just across that 10 inch line, about an eighth of an inch. That will allow you to assemble your artwork or picture or whatever it is later and have room for play. Now holding that exactly there, let's bring this stop down to exactly there and lock it down. The subsequent pieces I cut will be going exactly to the same place and will be the same length. Now let's turn the saw for the final cut. All right. If you're using a clamp, this is the time you tighten it. Make sure that you're set on exactly 45 degrees and perform your cut. This piece is done. Now I'm going to make the second piece that matches that perfectly. Once again, make sure you've got that set exactly at 45 degrees and that the back of the molding is over the center of that slot and we make our cut. Slide it down and once again Bring your miter blade back to exactly 45 degrees. Your two 10 inch pieces will be exactly the same length. And that completes the fourth of our four pieces for our frame. You're ready to go to the joiner now and put it together. A couple of comments that may help you. I made this cut with a blade that came on the miter saw. They usually come with pretty decent blades. They're mostly carbide tip, 60 tooth or so. But if you are going to do fine picture framing, you need to get a better blade. Investigate a wood cutting blade that has 80 carbide teeth and it will cost you $100 or maybe a little more, but the results will be worth it. Also find you a good quality blade sharpening service. Don't take it to your neighbor down the street. And if you keep them sharp as you cut, they will last for many years. And that is how you use the Logan Saw Fence Kit to turn your own miter saw into a pretty neat system for cutting picture frame molding.